Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me this week. Today we are going to be quickly looking at highlighting and how I highlight, how bad I am at highlighting, but also covering the different techniques on how to highlight your miniatures. I will be using Blood Angels color schemes like I have on the rest of this series, and I'll be using Fire Dragon Bright to do the highlighting on top of Mephiston Red, Agrax Shade, and Evil Sun's Scarlet. I filmed the tutorial a couple of days ago, so I'm just gonna flip right over and we'll get carried on. Wow, thanks so much. I'm really glad that you passed over to me for this. Not a good bit, not try it again. Wow, thanks for handing it over. Gonna go through some of the process of highlighting and how I do it well and how I also do it quite badly. I'll show you two different examples of what I've done. Maybe three, yeah, let's go with three. Let's go with three examples. I like to paint in components. I like to break my models down and do them modularly. So I like to build the torso first, get the get the legs and the torso put together so that I can paint them, get them done, stick them to a base, and then add the arms and stuff later on. And the last thing I like to do before I fix the arms on is get the highlighting done. So here is one of my minis from a little while ago. Let me get that. Let me get that. Let me, come on. Let me, let me just... Let me, just, let me just let me just let me just let me let me just go to one minute. Okay, this is annoying me. Right? This would be really good if I knew how cameras worked. Yeah, this guy, there's one that I did. This was quite a while ago. Um, you'll find that different types of highlight paint work differently. I find that the Salamander's color scheme is way better for highlighting because it blends really well. So you can see on this Salamander here, how the green, especially on the Power Pack for Terminator Armor, how that blends really, really nicely with, I guess you can use many different techniques for, for, for dry brushing when the paints blend, but with Blood Angels, I found that the Fire Dragon Bright highlight color does not blend at all. No matter what you do, whoops, doesn't whoops, does not blend very well. And you end up with, if you're not very careful, you end up with what I've got here, which is like really bleedy, kind of overly accented edges of your armor. But it's okay because I've been able to do to turn that into models like this, my sort of aggressors, which have um, slightly more accented shading colors, which I've used to, which I've used um, contrast paints to achieve. So I put contrast paint on top of the highlights. So you get this darkened down effect of the whole thing and it makes those, those more pronounced highlights work better. So you can fix that sort of thing if, you, if you're not good at highlighting like me. But then there's the other method of highlighting, which is probably more commonly used and I have talked about it before, and it's uh, it's dry brushing, which a little bit less pronounced. Let's see if you can stand up here. Probably can. A little bit less pronounced, but you can see that there's some highlighting on those edges. It's very faint, and probably a little bit more tasteful as far as good model painting goes. You can see a little bit on that as well. I'm going to do this again because you will find that the Fire Dragon Bright is very watery. It's very watery paint. So it comes out of the tin or it comes out of the pot very, very, it comes out very runny. So I will need to do a couple of coats of those. But what I'm going to do is show you how I do it. For contrast, here is a marina. I've used the edge of a brush to highlight. I've highlighted that a bit more with a bit more pronunciation. You can see it on the back as well. A little bit more pronunciation on those highlights. I do quite like that. I still think there's a little bit much going on, just a little bit too much highlighting. It's slightly too pronounced, but I prefer this style, even though it's not really very well regarded um, as you know, as far as painting goes. So I'm going to show you how I do all of those different me methods um, and try and give you a few different things that you can work with to get the different highlighting effects that I have been. Well, exhibiting and working with, so. 
what I'm going to do is take one of these guys who I've painted with the base and the layer colors and then shade it slightly. I think I've redone certain areas of it. Not perfectly done, but we're here to learn, aren't we? What I'm going to do is, let me see which brush I can use. Mr. Big. That's a dry brush. We use an artificer layer brush, a little skinny one. And get this guy back up wherever we want. Is this him? No, that was him. I'm going to take our highlight color, which in this case is Fire Dragon Bright. And with a lot of colors, obviously you need to water them down. You'll see in other painting tutorials that you do. You do something like my wet palette here. That was way too close to the camera, sorry. A little bit of Fire Dragon Bright. I was going to say, you don't really need to water this stuff down because it's very, it's very watery to begin with. It's very light. And you'll notice that it's not very pronounced. It's not a very strong color whenever you put it on the first time. So I'm just going to quickly show you. So I've got it. You can kind of see all the way around the brush. And I'm not going to use the tip. I'm going to use the side. Turn it to an angle and kind of run the, the brush along the edge of the armor where the highlight needs to go. You see already there I've kind of made a little bit too much. You can remove it. this color is light enough that you can kind of brush a lot of it off of your finger, which a lot of more experienced painters will be screaming at me for. But we will We're all beginners here, I think. And run along the edge. Follow it with your angle, very gently. My brother's much better at this than I am. His highlighting is incredible and if he's nice enough maybe someday I'll show you some of his highlighting but we'll keep going at that angle keep our brush nice and tilted very lightly follow those edges and we'll turn it on and do his boots see that's a bit too much there it's really hard to do those less defined edges like on the back of a boot because they're a little bit more round they catch a lot more paint than you maybe want them to to be super light i'm not that keen on the recommended blood angels color scheme i kind of like my accidental custom one better the one with the the contrast paint if you guys have any other blood angels recipes that you've seen show me um, or comment and tell me the combination or whatever or link me or something um, and I'll try them out because they you look that the salamander that I showed a second ago was the recommended Citadel paint recipe for that and I know a lot of people don't like using Citadel paints but I, I don't know enough yet but you find that the Citadel the Citadel salamanders scheme or recipe uh, blends really really well with itself like the green the highlight color blends really really well with the the layers especially in the non oil shade but this the orange just kind of sits and if you don't get it exactly right it's kind of horrible so if you have any suggestions do let me know but yeah so you follow that around and you kind of end up with something slightly more meticulous and higher quality than this i'll finish that one off obviously off camera but i don't want you to make you watch me paint for half an hour while i do that so i wash my artificer brush put that away and then the other method that we were talking that I was going to show you this one this method is dry brushing which you'll see on all kinds of channels and um, you kind of see a lot less a lot less pronunciation on those edges but you can see the breastplate especially it's just enough highlight to bring that edge out but I think with with the Citadel or with this or Fire Dragon Bright, it's just not quite enough for me. So I'll show you how to dry brush first of all, and then I'll go back over one of my other ones and see. We'll see if it makes any sort of difference. So let's let me get some paint on your brush and just kind of work most of it off, kind of harshly working the brush like this, so you can work paint into the bristles. But it's still it's it's mostly dried off, and then you just you want to move the brush quite quickly from side to side, and just let it float over the model and catch any edges and raised areas. 
Obviously, if you have a better dry brushing technique than mine, do let me know. I'm always open to learn, but I'm just showing the basics of these sorts of things. See, I don't know very well. The problem with dry brushing is, oops, I wasn't even on camera. The problem with dry brushing is you end up with things like this, where it kind of gives you a little too much of a highlight in inside the armor plate, which you don't really want because then it looks a little bit. It just doesn't. It doesn't pop quite so nicely. So we'll show you these. Nice, like, obviously not very far from the model, but just off, so that you're brushing that surface and catching any bits that kind of stand out from this. And you can kind of see as I go that the edges are starting to stand out just a little bit more. The the, the butt armor part is usually the easiest place to see dry brushing work, so I'll do a little bit there. You can kind of move it in different directions and see what works. And you can kind of see that starting to come out now. Just brings out the edge a little bit, which is makes it look that little bit more realistic. Sorry, these kids screaming that so I don't know if you can hear that. Starting to bring out those light plates a little bit more. So that's that's how you that's the basic principle of dry brushing. Again, a lot of people are much better at it than I am, but um, have a go at it that way. So I'm going to take one of the ones that I've already dry brushed, get rid of some of that excess. You can probably see how wasteful dry brushing can be. Although it's, I mean, you do get quite a lot of paint in your in each of your pots, so it wouldn't worry too much. So. I'm going to go over these edges again, I'm going to see what happens if I do another layer of dry brushing to try and just make the edges pop out a little bit more. I'm just going to do the same thing again, the same raised areas of the armour. Still, yeah, I'm catching that all wrong. So it does, It if you do have this kind of standard Blood Angels recipe, the recommended um, Games Workshop one, doing a second layer does bring out the edges a little bit more. The way I'm getting the aqua there as well, kind of a chest part, I'm going to paint that gold afterwards, so don't worry about getting paint on that now. That's why I do this in modules, so that I don't ruin the gold and stuff when it goes on. I'm just going to run over the rest, see if I can pick out some more. But dude, that's actually turning out quite nicely. It's still not... Got nothing on the salamanders. The salamanders paint recipe works way better. But yeah, if you have any such suggestions on how to do the Blood Angels with a more flattering kind of highlight colour or... I know that Midwinter Minis did a really good rare Blood Angels paint tutorial where you use kind of browns and stuff. I really like that. My brother uh, kind of contests me on it. He doesn't really like that they weren't red, he's a bit pure in that sense that Blood Angels should be red apparently. Um, but I really liked his way of using the brown, I'll link that video below if you want. But yeah, if you like, if you have any other suggestions, let's do, do this guy again. Give them to me down below because I really want to know. I don't, I don't like that if you highlight these enough for the highlight to show it kind of starts to turn certain armor plates orange which I guess is okay but then you know you want your blood angels to be red or some sort of austere passionate red brown orangey variant not mostly orange you know see some parts of that when I cook out like this leg is turning okay apart from that plate there and this leg is kind of the opposite sort of too much of a highlight going on um, but then around the back it's looking very very good see I like this a lot it's kind of hit and miss sometimes you have to you do have to experiment a little bit and try and see what works but um, let me see what this chest plate turns out like see that's looking pretty cool I'll maybe see if I can do another red layer I don't know if you have any recommendations leave them down below um, oops. I'll finish 
esta zona. That's not so bad. Not fantastic, but it's okay. We're still learning. So yeah, that's how I that's how I do my eyelines. You can kind of see on this guy as well. He's got some. I'm still working on him. Not finished. Highlighting is okay. That was with the edge of a brush. That wasn't dry brushed. Um, none of these guys. He's not even been highlighted at all yet. This one was the edge of a brush. This one was heavy, very heavily shaded, kind of as an experiment afterwards. Still red, but mostly very, 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 very dark. So, yeah, there's all kinds of different outcomes and stuff you can have. But yeah, I'm gonna shoot back again. Um, but thank you for watching. So, thank you so much again for joining me this week. I did find some of the footage from the Lost Third video where it was stored on the camera, so I'll maybe try and put together some bits from that, just as like a montage of going through the initial shades and layers, uh, shading colors and layer colors and base colors, see what sort of footage I do have of that, and then maybe upload a video of just some sort of montage of that. So do stick around for that. I am now also working on new channel intros and stuff, seeing as I lost all of those before, but again, stick around and wait for those to appear they won't be here this week but they'll be here soon and again thank you so much please remember to subscribe because a totally new channel totally new thing for me and it's really really nice to see that people enjoy it so hopefully we'll we'll get a little bit of a community going but thank you so much and i will see you again soon